Well, good morning, dear saints. Thanks for joining us again today as we take comfort and hope in God's Word. Today we are uh, February 9th, and we are in the Psalms. Our psalm for today is Psalm 23, and we will spend today and tomorrow in Job chapter 6. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, the psalm for today is a psalm that I'm sure you know. It is the first five verses of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. This is the word of the Lord. I don't think there's a funeral that I've ever done where the family is not requested to hear Psalm 23. And there's a very good reason for that. Sometimes it's because it's one of the only psalms they know. But sometimes it's because this psalm gives such comfort in such a broken time. That when a family is struggling with all of the things that have gone on in their world, they hear from this psalm absolute hope and promise. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. Jesus is with us in our suffering, which does not always take our suffering away. But it gives us hope while we suffer and while we walk through that process of grieving and suffering. That's very important for us today because that is the same thing that Job cries out for in the first part of chapter 6. This is Job chapter 6, the first 13 verses. Then Job answered Elipaz and said, Oh, that my vexation were weighed and my calamities laid on the balances, for it would be heavier than the sand of the seas. Therefore my words have been rash. For the arrows of the Almighty are in me. My spirit drinks their poison. The terrors of God are arrayed against me. Does the wild donkey bray when he has grass, or the ox low over his fodder? Can that which is tasteless be eaten without salt, or is there any taste in the juice of the mallow? My appetite refuses to touch them. They are as food that is loathsome to me. Oh, that I might have my request, and that God would fulfill my hope, that it would please God to crush me, that he would let loose his hand and cut me off. This would be my comfort. I would even exalt in pain unsparing, for I have not denied the words of the Holy One. What is my strength that I should wait, and what is my end that I should be patient? Is my sight, is my strength the sight of stones? Or is my flesh bronze? Have I any help in me when resources is driven from me? This is the word of the Lord. Job is hurting. Job is hurting because of everything that he's lost. You remember at the beginning of the book, in just a moment or two, Job lost everything that is dear to him. All of his, all of his uh, opportunity for income, all of his livestock is gone. All of his family has been killed. His health is now gone as well. Job has lost everything. And in the midst of this, in the midst of all of that loss, comes grieving, comes suffering, and comes pain. And that is the reality of where Job is in chapter 6. It's a reality that you and I have been in as well. One of the great things, one of the great lessons to learn from Job chapter 6 is it's okay to talk about our pain. 
it's okay to admit that we are right in the midst of it and we don't like it. It's okay to cry out to God in our pain and suffering. Job lashes out a little bit, maybe unreasonably, against Elipaz. Now, Elipaz, remember, he's trying to be helpful, but he's trying to offer a solution. Elipaz is consistently saying to Job, uh, there is some sin you're not confessing. If you would just repent, then this would all be over. That's not helpful. Job doesn't need an answer. Job needs someone to be with him. Job needs someone to simply walk with him and say, Lord, have mercy, and to point him to the hope and promise. Job recognizes it. He, his words, he's lashed out a little bit quickly against Elipaz, and that's what hurting people do. A lot of times at a funeral when a family comes together, they've lost someone that they love, and the emotions are great, and they're right at the end of the sleeve. And some little thing will happen and a family will go off. It's because of the pain. It's because of the suffering. It's maybe an insignificant thing, but it's enough. It's the camel, the straw that broke the camel's back. That's where Job is. The reality for Job is he's suffering. For the arrows of the Almighty are in me. Now, there's an honesty here in Job's suffering. He knows that whatever is going on in his world, this is from God, even the suffering. The Lord gives, the Lord takes, blessed be the name of the Lord. We heard that at the beginning. And now the Lord has given Job suffering. And it's real, and it's painful, and there are no answers you and I have the inside track into Job because we know about the conversation of God and Satan at the beginning of the book of Job. But here, Job is in the midst of it and he doesn't know what's going on other than he's suffering. As Job is here, Job cries out to God. His suffering is real. In fact, Job even says that it would be better if God would just crush me, just take my life. So my suffering would be over. That's how much he hurts. Now Job did not take his own life. He did not sin in the midst of this. But Job doesn't know if he can bear it. And he cries out to God in this. All of this suffering, all of the venting that Job is doing, Job did not sin. This would be my comfort. He talks about his death. I would even exalt in pain unsparing, for I have not denied the words of the Holy One. You see, there's an honesty here in Job's suffering. He's mad, he's hurting, he's grieving and mourning, and he's crying out to God, and he knows that God knows why this is happening. He knows that God is giving this to him. And Job remains faithful. It's not pretty. But he remains faithful. Job is a great example for us of completely trusting when he can't see. Of recognizing the situation and even pouring out his, his grief and anger to God and yet remaining faithful in what he does. As we go through this, as we see Job here, it gives us an insight into what we should do when someone is suffering. It gives us an insight that they might not need answers. They might not want answers. They simply need someone to walk with them, to give them comfort, and to give them the hope and promise that we have in Christ. A number of years ago, I was working with a, with a teen who was having a lot of struggles in her world, and we talked a lot, and each time I felt it was my duty to offer advice. And finally, one day she lashed out at me, and she said, Pastor, I don't need advice. I need you to listen. And she was right. Wisdom beyond her years. She simply needed someone to listen. She was Job. I was Elipaz. And after that, as I walked with her, I pointed her to the hope and the promise that we have in Christ. Brothers and sisters, that's our responsibility. There will be times when those around us are hurting and what they need from us is tender compassion. 
They need us to walk with them. They need us to listen. They need us, as much as we can, to point them to the hope and promise that God keeps his promises. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, as we go back to Psalm 23. We have a great group of resources, a great treasury of resources in God's word. And we turn to that to offer comfort and hope. And sometimes being with someone who's hurting is simply enough just to be there in the room, to hold their hand, to put your arm on their shoulder, and to remind them that they are not alone. That is comfort as well. Job is struggling, and Elipaz is missing the mark. But I pray for us, dear saints, that we will see someone who is suffering, and we will lift them up. We will point them to the hope and promise that they have in Christ. Today, dear saints, think of someone who is suffering, someone that you know is struggling. Write a thank you or a a note to them saying, we're praying for you. Call them on the phone. Pray for them. Uphold your brother or sister who is struggling. And if you are the one who is struggling, reach out to one of your friends and invite them to walk with you in your pain. In the name of Jesus, amen. For our catechetical review today, where do we go to find hope and promise? I lost my page here at the end for the catechism. Where do we find hope and promise? Well, again, looking at the Lord's Prayer, we could go to the seventh petition, but deliver us from evil. But we've been there recently. We could go to remembering our baptism but we go to the Lord's Supper, to the sacrament of the altar. What is the benefit of eating and drinking? These words, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, show us that in the sacrament, forgiveness of sins, life and salvation are given us through these words. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Our Lord promises us gifts of strengthening our faith when we receive his body and blood. And when we are suffering, that gift of strength is a tremendous gift because it points us to the resurrection. It points us to the victory of our Savior who has endured all things, even suffering, and has been our champion. He has risen from the dead and promises he will carry us through as well. We pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day and the gifts you've given to us. We ask, Father, today you would be with all of those who are suffering. We pray, Father, that you would uphold them. We pray, Father, that you would give them comfort and strength through your word and promises. Use us, dear Father, to be those who will walk along with those who are suffering and struggling, to give them comfort and assurance, to give them someone to talk to. And give us wisdom, Father, that we might always, through your word, point them to the hope we have, the healing and the and the the healing and the gifts we have from you. Bless us now and hear us as we pray the prayer your Son has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, pray for someone today who is suffering and struggling, and maybe have call one of your friends and have them walk along with you in your suffering. Go in his peace. Thanks be to God.